Hello and welcome to another edition of uh, Rangers Law. I'm just going to go over the hammock again. Um, Avagdu in particular wanted to see some of the other options on the hammock and uh, it wasn't really clearly explained in the previous segment. So I'm just going to have a look at the hammock in its various forms and how it can be set up. And uh, yeah, hope it proves instructive. Again, this is the Double D Travel Hammock. Um, I think they're about 45 to 50 pounds. Um, this one served me very well for a number of years and uh, we're just going to go into it. So, as you can see here, I've got the, instead of the spreader bars, I've got two sticks spreading out the mosquito net. This is advisable, it's not absolutely necessary, but it does mean that you feel like you've got a bit more space. And if you're anywhere near a river, you want the mozzie net up. And if you're anywhere in Scotland anywhere, you probably want the mozzie net up. Otherwise, uh, you're going to wake up with a face looking like porridge with all the bites that you'll get. For these, this purpose, I've just uh, slung a couple of military bungees between the two trees to act as a ridge line. Um, generally speaking, you can use this. I'll show you it with a uh, tarp up on top of it shortly. But uh, these particular bungees I've had for about 10 years. So they really are worth seeking out and finding because they are designed to last a lot longer. I'm just going to have a look at the other stick at the other end. And as you can see, this gives you a, a degree more headroom. Um, you can also do this if, it's, uh, if you've had to set up the hammock on the ground. So you can actually peg it out on the ground and get it tight. And if you have got any overhead lines, even if you've got a couple of small saplings, if you line it up, you can still put a very lightweight ridge line. Even if it wouldn't hold the hammock, it will definitely hold the mosquito net. So if you've got any kind of foliage or any kind of fencing, you can rig up the mozzie net so that it's not lying on your face. Now, although in the uh, last episode we, we only really talked about the carabiners, I just want to take a moment to show you how I rig my um, tree huggers up. And it, as you can see here, they go round the back of the tree and uh, these are done up with a reef knot, so left over right and under, right over left and under, and that's more than secure enough. Because of the flat nature of the webbing, it means that uh, it will grip onto the tree if there's any kind of bark on it. I've never had a problem with doing it this way, and it allows an easy adjust, because if you need to adjust the height of the hammock, you just loosen it off, pull this forward and slide it up and down the tree as you need and then the weight of the hammock will tug it back down, give it a tug and it will stay where you put it which is the, way, the reason I like this. The other good thing about this is it's very flat so undoing a reef knot is uh, really really easy. Now the other thing I want to talk about um, with my hammock setup is how high it is off the ground. As you can see here it's only about a foot and a half off the ground and there's a good reason for this. In the UK, you're not really hiding from bears or anything like that. You, you're not really going to attract any predatory animals. But what you don't want to have is have your hammock fail on you and you literally fall, fall out of the sky, pretty much. And when you see people setting up hammocks that are five or six feet above the ground and getting into them, that's great if you've actually got the chance of being attacked by a bear, but it's not so good if any part of your hammock fails. Now, personally speaking, I've had a hammock fail on me in 15 years, three times. And I've never liked having the hammock up high because it makes it a pain to get into and a pain to get out of. And those times when I was, when I did have an accident, I only fell a couple of, a foot, a foot and a half at most, which I think probably saved me from a serious back injury. So one time um, the hammock was on a steel ring instead of where I've got the carabiners and the steel ring sheared just gave up and the other time the stitching at the end of the hammock failed and the third time the there there has been a rodent that had chewed out part of the material just shy of where the cinching at the ends of the hammock is and all three times I was lucky enough only to be about a foot off the ground it also means that when you're sitting into your hammock the end of the hammock um, allows you know comes up to your knee and it allows your feet to touch the ground which is much more comfortable if you're using it as a chair Now there's a whole load of ways you can um, tie up bungees to secure your tarp. Literally any piece of uh, foliage can be used. 
as you can see, and any condition of bungee. Having bungees on the tarp makes it like loads and loads and loads easier and loads more wind resistant. So we're just going to have a look at the others. Because this really is the beauty of the tarp. Tarp and bungees gives you so much flexibility. I'll come back and have a look. Now the real beauty of a tarp and hammock setup is that no matter what the foliage around you, you can nearly always set up, as long as you've got a couple of trees to hang it from, there's almost always other foliage that you can attach the tarp to. So if you see, got the ridge line on the tarp, and we'll just go and have a look. And if we go in a bit closer, you can see it's just wrapped around this smaller tree. This wouldn't really support the hammock, but if you go in even closer, you'll notice that one hook on the bungees is up, and one hook is pointing down. If you're putting the two bungee hooks through the same hole on the tarp, or the same grommet on the tarp, always go up and down, and this prevents it from being blown out of position or detached as a result of heavy winds. Going around the other side, got another bungee connected to a second bungee that's just wrapped round and clipped in on itself. And if you really, really don't want to be found, you can add a camo net like I've done here. Um, camouflage netting used to be dirt cheap when it was military surplus. I don't believe this is military surplus. It's certainly um, um, available on eBay. And this stuff seems to be sort of more for dens and play areas, but it works really, really well. And I'm just going to go about 30 yards away and shoot down onto it, and you'll be able to see... Um, what I'm talking about if you want extra concealability. You could also put up um, a camouflage tarp like I've done here and then extend the camouflage netting over where you're going to be sitting, working and cooking, etc. So you could make quite a large camp and maybe we'll do that in another later video. So we're just going to wander, I think it's only about 20 yards away to the nearest ridge and uh, I'm going to put everything that I've got underneath it and uh, we'll have a look and see how it is. So I'm looking down directly at my hammock, camouflage tarp and camouflage netting. I promise you the centre of this screen is the roof of the, the uh, tarp and I'm 20 yards away. So we're going to just literally walk in a straight line towards the tarp and if, you're, if you were 20 metres off the beaten track and you just wanted to set up for the night this is what I'm talking about with concealability. So I'm just going to walk straight down here. Excuse the camera juddering. It's, uh, I'm not on a path or anything. So this tree here is literally just to the left of the hammock. I'm going to carry on going. Literally in a straight line towards my camp. And I promise you, I'm looking directly at my camp. The top of the tarp is literally in the center of the viewfinder. I'm going to carry on, I'm 10 meters away now. It's becoming a little more apparent. So you can make it out now, I'm about 8 metres away. But you'd have to be this close. You'd have to literally come within seeing me to see it. So I'm not sure whether a cam net is nece necessary for a wild camping trip. I'm just saying, if you really wanted to be concealed, and I could have probably done a better job of concealing, given a, given a little more time, I would have probably put more of the cam net over this end of the, t of the, t of the hammock. And you can see it there. But look at that. You, you know, DPM is amazing foliage for temperate forest. And there you have it. 
So it's a bit more of a look at a, um, a tarpon hammock setup. This is what I'm currently using. Um, it's a British military two by three meter tarp. Um, literally eBay camouflage netting, again in two by three meters. It's what I use as the backdrop for my studio most of the time. And a DD travel hammock. And that's how it would typically be set up. I'm gonna do another video I think soon with a complete camp set up for comfort. And, uh, but this was just an overview, particularly for a Vagdu, because he's one of my Patreons, and he asked um, what it would look like, whether it was a bridge type hammock. And I think this covers pretty much everything that I missed out on the previous very short video. So again, thanks for watching.